first speaker of the night is Elspeth Mayer. Now, Elspeth is a mom, a wife, a storyteller, a news junkie, an advocate feminist, a cook, reformed reporter, and proud to be a friend maker of the YWCA of Calgary. Please join me in giving her a warm welcome. A woman's place is in the home. There was a time this was the conventional wisdom. We now mercifully recognize that a woman's place, in addition to the home, is the courtroom, the boardroom, the classroom, and the factory floor. We have indeed come a long way since the time of Carol Brady. And while many women now have opportunities beyond their kitchens, for some, home is not a safe place. Domestic violence, a crime often committed in the home, continues to strip women of their dignity, their power, and their self-determination. While anyone at any income level or from any culture can experience abuse, more than 80% of all domestic assaults reported to police are committed against women. In Calgary, in 2014, nine women lost their lives to domestic homicide. In the Shelter and Counseling Programs at the YWCA of Calgary, we see the impact of family violence every day. And we know that since abuse strips women of their autonomy, their ability to work, to find childcare or safe housing, it's not as simple as asking, why does she stay in that home? Let me tell you Sherry's story. Now, that's, that's not her real name, but this is her real story. Sherry had a tough start in life, and she met Clint when she was in her early 20s and embarked on her first real relationship with a man she thought would be a great partner. In the beginning, Clint was kind, he was committed, he was supportive of Sherry and her young daughter. They were very much in love and Sherry felt secure, happy, and, and trusting, really for the first time in her life. Clint said he would take care of them. He lied. Slowly his nature began to change. He began to question what Sherry was doing, where she was going, who she was seeing. She thought, maybe he's just worried about me. Then Clint began to criticize the small things. To pacify him, Sherry would make sure she cleaned the house or cooked the meals just how he liked them. But according to Clint, she could do no right. He began to use threats that scared her. He told Sherry that if she ever left him, he'd kill her. He moved the family to a small town outside of Calgary away from her support network. Forbidden from using birth control, Sherry had three more kids in the 10 plus years she and Clint were together. Eventually, the beatings were merciless, severe, and frequent. During one assault, Sherry's daughter ran to the neighbor's house and that neighbor called 911. Sherry and Clint were court ordered to attend counseling and she was connected to the team at YWCA Sheriff King Home. With, few, with four children and few options, she needed help. <coughs> By this time, Sherry's life was a prison. Clint controlled every aspect of her life, her behavior, her finances, her freedom. It took six months to set up an elaborate plan to escape, involving local law enforcement, extended family, and the Sheriff King home team. Clint knew Sherry wanted to leave him, and every day he'd take one of her four children to work with him, essentially keeping them hostage and her under control. One day he didn't take them, and that was the day they ran. Sherry says, I remember settling into our room at the shelter for the first and exhaling for the first time in years. We were able to relax. We could eat without worrying about our next meal. We could play without being punished for being too loud. 
During her time at the shelter, Sherry got connected to legal advice and social assistance. The shelter staff helped her find a place to rent, something very tough to do in a city with a desperate shortage of affordable housing. But Sherry's journey home was really just beginning. After a decade of abuse, she and her kids needed support to begin to understand that the abuse was not their fault, that they were deserving, indeed worthy, of more. They needed to address the trauma they'd experienced so that they could begin to feel safe. So what's it really like inside a shelter like YWCA Sheriff King Home? We provide a safe, comfortable place to sleep, food to eat, clothing and shoes to supplement meager possessions, maybe a special afghan knit by a volunteer to wrap up in. But just as our own homes are about so much more than the furniture and the clutter inside them, what we seek to provide in a women's shelter is the sum of the intangibles. We're trying to offer peace, a place to let your guard down and rest, space to plan, time to cry. One woman who came to our shelter after years of abuse and homelessness took this photo. She said it represents home and safety to her because before she came to us, she couldn't ever take her shoes off just in case she needed to run. Finding home after brutal experiences is much more complicated than simply finding a new place to lay your head. In our shelters, the team aims to offer support, gentleness, and compassion. We aim not to judge and to support a woman to help her move forward to a healthier future in her own time. The temporary shelters we've offered to tens of thousands of women over the past century are often a touchdown at the beginning of their way home. The real work is about helping women find safety inside of themselves, regardless of where they live. Home is about much more than doors that we can close and lock at the end of the day to keep the boogeyman out. It's about the empowerment that comes from the security of a healthy relationship with ourselves and with others. Indeed, home is where the heart is.